But now with the Reds conceding the divisional title to the Cardinals, there's really nothing else to do but save face in their final series of the 2000 campaign. To Bush Stadium we go, where Reynoldsburg native Mike Matheny is out for the season. He cut his figure on a hunting knife, a birthday gift. Unbelievable. We picked this up in the top of the first. Michael Tucker, a solo home run to right field off Garrett Stevenson. Good for his third on the year. Sean Casey follows him right there. Another a two-run jack to write his 20th home run on the year. The Reds out big three to nothing after two. Top of the third. Now they continue to be red hot. Alex Ochoa. He homers to left now. These guys have the best tonight. His 13th home run in the year. The Reds take a five to nothing lead over St. Louis. Bottom of the fourth, one out. Jim Edmonds. Ron Valone can do nothing. He strikes him out. He had a one hitter through five innings. This is Eli Marrero. He's safe at first base on Michael Tucker's fielding air right there. Edgar Renteria will score five to one Reds. To the ninth now. Runners on the corners for Ochoa. Ochoa. One right up the middle. That'll score Michael Tucker and the Reds win big over St. Louis. Eight to one. Valone struck out 16 batters, tying a club record. Casey three for five, two runs. Valone and just an outstanding night tonight. And cards, top one. This is Sean Casey. Singles the right center field. Brian Hunter scores. That makes it one to nothing. Reds. Then in the third. It's Michael Tucker ripping one down the right field line. Brian Hunter scores. Reds up two to nothing. Tucker winds up on third base. Next inning, Jason LaRue. Goodbye. Home run. Two run shot. His fifth. Reds five to nothing. Osvaldo Fernandez pitches seven shutout innings. Reds win it eight to four. The season ends tomorrow. Also tomorrow, it's Bengals and Dolphins four o'clock. Hey. Two New York Yankees were the only team to go through an entire baseball season never having been shut out. But that was only in a 154 game season. With just one run, Cincinnati would accomplish the same feat in a 163 game season, going back to that tie with Milwaukee on opening day. Wouldn't take long to break up the shutout. First inning, DT Cromer, a solo home run to center, his second of the year, and the Reds were guaranteed to have not been shut out the entire 2000 season. Bottom second, though, Will Clark gets a two run blast. Clark has been fantastic the last two months of the year for the Cardinals. His 12th since being acquired from Baltimore to run St. Louis. Reds would tie the game in the fourth on a Chris Sexton RBI single, and then Will Clark would put the Cardinals right back in front in the fifth. Single the wrong way, scores Fernando Vina, making it 3-2. A three-run homer from Craig Paquette would make it 6-2. And then to close out the game, Jason LaRue pops out to second base for the final out. And it may be the final out with Jack McKeon as the Reds' manager. He wishes good luck to Tony LaRusa in the playoffs as the Reds lose 6-2. Cincinnati finishes the season eight games over 500 at 85-77. and 77. The Cardinals' win gives them home field advantage in their upcoming division series with the Atlanta Braves. So what's next for the Reds? To explore that and look back at the 2000 campaign, here's George Grant and Chris Welsh one more time at the scene. The short story of this day, the Cardinals win 6-2 to two over the Reds. The only thing the Reds are really fighting for today was not to be shut out all season long. 163 games, they would not be shut out. D.T. Cromer took care of that early with a home run, so that business taken care of. You look back on this season, Chris, and probably the one word that would uh, really sum it all up. Disappointing for the Reds that they're not in the postseason. Well, disappointing, George. There's an old saying in baseball that you can't win the, the pennant in April, but you can lose it in April. And I can't say that really about the Reds' April, but certainly through the first three months of the season, they played less than 500 baseball. Their earned run average was a run better in the last three run, or last three months of the year. And also with the hitting, the batting average went way up the last three months of the year. But it was a case of too little, too late for the Reds this year. Just weren't able to put the whole thing together in one package. Maybe next year will be their year. And the final part of this story will be told on Monday morning. Jack McKean and the coaches will meet with Jim Bowden. It's expected at that time that Jack McKean will not be back as the manager of the Reds next year. So where do they go in the offseason? McKean waved to Tony La Russa at the end of today's game to wish him luck in the postseason. Will Jack be back? We'll find that out beginning tomorrow, Monday morning in Cincinnati. For Chris Welch, this is George Grant. Let's go back to you guys. George and Chris, see you next year. Good evening, Ohio. I'm Dan Decro. And I am Damon Andrews. The writing was on the wall for quite some time, and today the big league axe finally fell on Synergy Field. The meeting was scheduled for 9 o'clock a.m. in General Manager Jim Bowden's office. If it started on time, Jack McKeon was out the door by 9.01. McKeon said it only took about 45 seconds for Bowden to tell him thanks for your time, 
but your services are no longer necessary. Jack McKeon was fired today after nearly three and a half years as manager of the Cincinnati Reds. Big things were expected out of the Reds in 2000. After winning 96 games a year ago, Cincinnati wrapped up an 85 and 77 campaign yesterday with a loss in St. Louis. The magic of 99 didn't stick around for this season. As a result, Jack Mack won't be around next season. I hired him eight years ago as a special assistant and his contributions uh, to the organization uh, from scouting uh, to player development uh, to managing this team uh, have been significant um, and certainly well appreciated. And I'm going to be rooting for the Reds, uh, you know, for the next two or three or four, five, ten years because of all these guys that I have had contact with and helped in their development process and, and, and there's so many of them that I love. Well, from the penthouse to the outhouse, it just goes to show the Reds are no longer accepting mediocrity, said now former Red skipper Jack McKeon. If there's got to be a fall guy, I'll be glad to take that responsibility. Our Jim Day has the responsibility to wrap up the day from Synergy. We felt uh, that it was in the best uh, interest of the Reds organization uh, for the long term uh, that we have a change in leadership. Uh, in the dugout. Jack McKeon, with his trademark cigar in hand, went out today the way he came in, with class. Despite his contract not being renewed just one season after he was National League Manager of the Year. Unfortunately, that's the way the game goes. I mean, uh, you know, it's a business decision, and management has that prerogative. I've been through it before, and like I said, it's always a sad day, but on the other hand, maybe uh, it's not so sad. The firing is not uh, to put the blame on the manager. Uh, there's enough blame to go from the general manager um, all the way down uh, the organization and we all take our responsibility for uh, not being able to uh, win the division this year. Bowden says they all take the blame but it's usually the manager that takes the fall for the organization. Expectations were high this year and if there's got to be a fall guy I'll be glad to take the responsibility. The club didn't get to the pennant like everybody at home. I feel like, uh, you know, I have nothing to, be, nothing to be ashamed of or embarrassed but the job we've done there. I thought we'd done a tremendous job. And most of the times, you know, when you have a couple losing records, you get fired. But, uh, you know, you look at what we've done the last two years and over 90 wins a, a season, I, it's, it's, it's tough. McKeon was 32 games above 500 as the Red Skipper in three and a half seasons, and even though the front office might not have been satisfied, his glassy eyes tell the story of how he thinks the fans thought of him. And the fans, the thing I'll leave here with is uh, the fact that I think the fans appreciated what we tried to do here. Jim Bowden is said to be enamored with the big name manager, so don't be surprised if the Reds wait to see the status of the likes of Dusty Baker and Davey Johnson, even Lou Pinello, the last Reds manager to win a World Series. If they hire within, the candidates will be Ken Griffey Sr., Ron Oster, and Bob Boone. In Cincinnati, Jim Day for your regional sports report. All right, Jim, thank you very much. The 99 NL Manager of the Year wasn't all that in 2000, but he did shine at times. Overall, above 500 with a 33 and 30 mark when he took over for Ray Knight. That was back in 97. Jack's keeping it real at the age of 69, knowing that another managerial gig is probably not going to happen, but the guy still has plenty to offer in the bigs, Dan. Now, you know, Damon, speculation is going to go on all month during the playoffs over who the Reds are going to hire. As Jim mentioned, Ken Griffey Sr., Ron Ost are the top two in-house candidates, but you know Jim Bowden's going to look at a couple of his favorites. Right. Former Reds managers, Davey Johnson and Lou Pinella, but both are still employed. Sweet Lou still in the playoffs with the M's. Yeah, we'll see what happens when the, uh, the Mariners meet the White Sox in the AL uh, uh, Divisional Series, but Lou Pinella has said in the past that he would like to return mm -hmm. to Cincinnati. He also would like to go back to Florida where he has a, a home, but Larry Rothschild, we just heard today that he is going to be retained by the Tampa Bay Devil Rays, so Lou Pinella's options may, may be out in Cincinnati. You know, I could see Lou back in Cincinnati. Wouldn't be a bad thing to